Hello, hello, stretchy friend, Danny here. And today I am going to be talking to you about back flexibility, stretches for our back and our spine. So normally when people think about back flexibility, usually they're thinking about being able to back bend, which is great. That is a component of back flexibility. But today we're talking about full spinal flexibility, making sure our back is happy, strong, and stretchy, working through all of the ranges of motion our spine was designed to move in. So that includes spinal extension, back bending, spinal flexion or front bending, forward folding, spinal lateral flexion, side bending, and then spinal or axial rotation, being able to twist, making sure that the joints between our vertebrae and our whole back is comfortable moving all of those ranges of motion is not only going to keep our back happier in the long run, but it can help us increase the range of motion in some of those individual ranges of motion. So for example, if you're someone who's working on your upper back bending flexibility, your thoracic spinal extension, that's a really challenging range of motion for our upper back to do. It wasn't really designed to do a lot of that. But our upper back is really good at twisting and side bending. So if we include more training that works in the range of motion that it likes to move in, twists and side bends as part of our warm up and our conditioning, before we ask it to do that range of motion, back bending, that's a little bit harder, we can get more of a range of motion through that area because it feels a little bit more safe and supported. So even though these may not be directly related to the things that you're training on, working on all of these ranges of motion is gonna be really good for your back in the long run. That said, let's dive into the stretches. So we're gonna start talking about stretches to help with spinal extension or back bending first. Often when we think about back stretches, we think about things like cobra pose, upper dog, bridge pose, full wheel for all of the yogis. And these are certainly poses that require back flexibility, but they don't actually stretch your back at all. In fact, when we're doing anything where we're arching, we're engaging the muscles of our back, shortening them to pull us into a deeper arch. What we're really doing is stretching the muscles on the front side of our body. So back bending is a lot more like front lengthening. But at the end of the day, it's actually really tightness of the muscles in the front of the body, unless you have very tight pecs or very tight shoulders, or very tight abdominal muscles that are limiting this range of motion. Usually it's the amount of strength through our core and those muscles in our back that limits the range of motion, how deep we can go into a back bend. All of that said, really just to mention that back bending stretches generally feel a little bit different than other stretches where we're expecting to feel a really intense stretching sensation in the muscle belly. Most back bending stretches feel a little bit more compressive and a little bit more engaged. So that's totally okay. Back extensions are one of my favorite drills for active back flexibility. I put them in, I think literally every back flexibility class that I teach. I can't think of a single one where I would not have included back extensions because they are so good at strengthening our back muscles. There's a zillion different variations. I'll link to a blog post that has a couple of other ones as well in this video description. But today we're gonna to work on a basic variation. So you're gonna start lying on your stomach, legs about hip width apart or a little bit wider on the floor, arms reaching back by your sides. You're gonna lightly engage your abs by sucking in your belly button, trying to pull it away from the floor. And keeping your legs on the floor, try to lift your chest off the ground. Doesn't matter if it doesn't lift very high, I want you to lift it as high as you can. Then you're gonna slowly lower back down. Repeat a couple of times, lifting your chest, legs still on the floor, lowering it back down. It's important to keep the legs on the floor because that's what differentiates this exercise from a Superman, which is also great, but that's a lot using our hips, like our glutes and our hamstrings to lift their legs. I really like the legs on the floor version because it really prioritizes making sure that your back is doing more of the work and we're doing more strengthening our back muscles and not necessarily strengthening. Cobra push-ups are another great back strengthener. And they're interesting because depending on whether you're going to your low or your high cobra, you could prioritize working on your upper or your lower back flexibility. For either of these, you'll start lying on your stomach, legs about hip width apart, just like that last exercise. This time you're gonna place your palms on the sides of your ribs or a little bit closer to your chest if that's more comfortable on your wrists. Keeping your elbows squeezing in, so make sure those elbows point up towards the ceiling. You're gonna engage your core by sucking that belly button in towards your spine, just like the last exercise and then slowly try to lift your chest off the ground. To start, see how much you can lift without using your hands, and then once you can't lift any higher, then you can use your hands to help. So option number one for this is going up to your low cobra, trying to lift up your chest, but keeping the very bottom ribs of your rib cage on the floor. That's gonna keep more of the stretch in your middle and your upper back. When your whole belly is on the floor, your low back can't help that much. And you're gonna slowly lower, vertebrae at a time, back down to the floor. 
Option number two would be pressing all the way up to your high cobra, lifting your whole belly off the mat, but keeping the hip bones down. High cobra is great, but it does go more into your lower back. So if your goal is more lower back flexibility, maybe doing your high cobra is a better choice. Personally, I like doing a couple of both, but important thing is starting with that ab engagement, pulling that belly button in, trying to lift our chest as much as you can without using your hands first, using your hands to help push you the rest of the way, and then slowly lowering with control. If you'd like an extra challenge, you can even take those hands off of the floor as you lower. Those last few stretches were active stretches, meaning we were intentionally using our muscles, engaging them, making them stronger to support a deeper stretch. Let's follow it up with a nice feel-good passive stretch. For the supported upper back stretch, you're gonna want something like a foam roller, yoga blocks, or a yoga wheel. And depending on the size of your prop, it might feel a little bit different. So you could try a couple different variations to pick the one that feels best for your body. They're gonna start sitting on the floor with your knees bent, feet on the floor, leaning backwards and placing your support prop of choice. So that could be a yoga block or two yoga blocks on top of each other, a foam roller or a yoga wheel under your upper back, aiming to get the support right at the bottom of your shoulder blades. And you're gonna take your hands behind your head to support the weight of your head, Squeeze your elbows together so the elbows are pointing towards the ceiling, not out to the side, and then start to arch on backwards. You keep your butt on the floor, that'll give you a little bit more of a stretch, but if that feels really, really intense, you can lift your butt off of the floor and let your head fall back, whatever feels better for your body. You're gonna hang out in this stretch for 15 to 30 seconds, as long as feels comfortable. Next up, let's take a look at spinal flexion, rounding our back. When we think about stretching our back, this is literally the range of motion that pulls those muscles longer into a stretch. Whatever feels like your upper back or your lower back is really tight, these are the types of stretches that'll stretch those muscles out and probably make it feel a little bit more comfortable. Let's start with cat-cat. Cat-cat was a classic yoga stretch, and today we're actually going to be looking at a narrow cat-cat to really exaggerate how much rounding through the back we're doing. So you're gonna start on a hands and knees position. And you can be on palms on the floor, or if you prefer, if it's more comfortable on your wrists, to do this one on fists. Instead of being in a traditional tabletop with hands underneath our shoulders, slide your hands back a little bit closer to your knees. And then we're gonna cat cow from here. You're gonna round your back by tucking your tailbone, tucking your chin towards your chest, sucking that belly button in, and puffing up the back of your ribs, lifting them as high as you can. So that's gonna be our rounded position, get a really nice stretch between all the muscles between our shoulder blades, all the way up and down each side of our spine. And then you're gonna arch your back by lifting your tailbone, lifting your collarbone, and lifting the crown of your head. And you're gonna repeat rounding and arching a couple of times. Zombie roll-ups are another great way to be stretching out all of the different segments of our spine. This is actually the body weight equivalent of a Jefferson curl. If you're uh, familiar with Jefferson curls, I happen to really like these ones with body weight because they're a little bit gentler than using weights right off the bat. For these, you're going to start standing with feet hip width apart. Loosely cross your arms in front of your chest and bend your knees a little bit. If you've got really, really tight hips and hamstrings, you might want to bend your knees quite a lot. Totally okay. This does not need to turn into a hamstring stretch. You're going to slowly roll on down into a forward fold. First, tucking your chin to your chest and around the neck. Then you're gonna let the weight of your head and your arms start to drift into rounding your upper back and you're gonna keep curling downwards. Keep leaning forwards as you let that round come into your middle back, your lower back, until you're in a nice deep forward fold. Again, knees can be super duper bent here. Once you're at the bottom, you can relax and then you're gonna slowly roll back up the same way you came down, starting by really tucking that tailbone, rounding through that low back, stacking one vertebrae at a time, low back, middle of the ribs, top of the ribs and shoulders, neck, and then head. And then repeat, slowly rolling down and up a couple more times. Final lateral flexion, the fancy word for side bending, which is one of those ranges of motion that our upper back is actually quite good at. So this is a range of motion I like including in days when I'm working on my back flexibility, focusing on my upper back to make sure it's getting all the love it needs, working in some of those easier ranges of motion first. First, we'll look at a seated overhead reach. For this stretch, you're gonna to wanna to be able to come to a comfortable seated position, whether that's sitting in a chair, on a floor, or on a yoga block. You're gonna reach your left arm down to the floor or to the sides of your hips for balance and support, and reach your right arm up overhead. Keep that palm facing in as you lean off to the left side. Trying to keep your chest lifted and waist vertical will focus more of the stretch on the upper side body, probably even feel it in your lats and the outside of your armpits. If you lean more towards the floor, thinking about side crunching more through the waist, this will bring a little bit more of the stretch into the lower side body in the obliques. Both of them are fine. 
Personally, I prefer focusing more on my upper body because that's the part of my body that's a little bit more tight, but you're welcome to try on both. You can hold this stretch for anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, and then do the same thing on the other side. For a more active version of our side bend, we can take that hand support away. So still sitting in that comfortable position, whether that's in a chair or on the floor or on a yoga block, you're gonna reach both arms overhead, palms facing in as you start to tilt to one side. So reaching those hands away towards the other corner of the room, Hold in just for a moment, and then reaching off towards the other side. Just like the last exercise, you can really choose to prioritize your upper back flexibility, keeping your chest and your sternum really, really lifted, or letting that side bend going a little bit more into your lower back, if your goal is more lower back side bending flexibility. Both of them work, as long as they feel safe and not crunchy in your spine. Finally, let's look at a couple stretches that help with spinal rotation or twisting, starting with a seated twist. So in a comfortable seated position, on the floor, on your knees, in a chair, whatever feels good, take your hands behind your head and let your elbows lay out to the side. Inhale and sit up as tall as you can, like there's a string pulling on top of your head all the way towards the ceiling, and then exhale, twist over to one side. Inhale, twisting back to the center, reach, reach, reach as tall as you can through your head. Exhale, twist to the other side. Repeating, twisting side to side, trying to keep your spine as long as possible while you're doing your twists. Finally, we'll take it over to a wall for a wall lunge twist. For this exercise, you're gonna want at least one yoga block to put between your knee and the wall. So we're gonna start kneeling in a 90 degree lunge next to the wall with your right leg forwards and your left knee on the floor near the wall. This is uncomfortable on your knee. You can put some padding under that knee, whether that's rolling your yoga mat or putting a block under that knee or a pillow if you happen to be at home. You're gonna take your other yoga block and push it between your right knee and the wall. So your goal is to keep that right knee pressing into the wall as you're twisting. The purpose of the yoga block is to make sure your hips aren't twisting and contributing to the twist. We're gonna try to keep this twist as much as we can in the upper part of our spine. Starting with both arms reaching forward, palms together. Left arm is gonna be pressing just a teeny bit into the wall. And you're gonna slowly twist to the right, opening your right arm out to the side, reaching as far back as you comfortably can. If you get any tingles in that right hand, instead of keeping that arm straight, go ahead, bend your elbow, putting it behind your head, reaching backwards with your elbow. Then you're gonna twist back to that starting position, bringing your chest forwards, arms together. And then repeat, twist and open and close. A couple of times on one side and then switch back. If you're interested in learning more stretches to help you with your back flexibility, you should check out the new full spinal flexibility on demand workshop I just put up on my website, which I'll link a link to in the description below. This 40 minute follow along workshop is good for all level of flexibility. So my stiffer friends are welcome to join this one as well. And in this workshop, we cover a lot of stretches like what we did in this video today. We talk about stretches that work on a front bending or side bending, our back bending and our twisting that helps strengthen and stretch our spine through all of these different ranges of motion. So if you're looking for a bit of a longer comprehensive back flexibility routine, that workshop would be a great pick for you. I hope you found these stretches that we covered today useful. If you've got any questions about any of the drills, by all means, leave me a question in the comments to this video. But I hope that you find lots of success incorporating these into your own training and your back starts feeling a lot better and a little stretchier in all of these different ranges of motion that we worked on today.